what is going on guys welcome back to the channel today we're doing an oil change all right there's some things I want to go over when completing an oil change for you gentlemen who do not have a hoist this procedure has been brought to my attention a few times and I thought well why not do a video of an oil change on my back so that uh, anyone who's going to try to tackle this has a little better familiarness with uh, actually going through this on their 6-7. Uh, one of the crucial things you're going to need is get you a few cans of brake clean or a case of brake clean because you'll definitely need it when you're doing fuel filters. But get you a Motorcraft oil filter. You're going to need a 16 mil wrench and a suitable oil filter strap that will go around that FL 2051. Additionally, you could have an Exxon Valdez. So let's get some rags, get them primed and ready for job. Also, get you two drain pans. I like one for the filter and one for the oil. Uh, I like to do the oil filter first while the uh, oil is draining so I can get both of them uh, draining at the same time. Um, and I don't want my filter to fall into a uh, full vat of fresh could be hot oil, but this one's cold. Definitely gonna be working with the creeper today. I'll show you guys the setup we got going on under here. So there's our drain plug and our filter. You can see, uh, looks like at one point in time, maybe some oil was leaking. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys uh, what I do to remedy that. And uh, yeah, let's get started. All right, I wanna start off by saying first, um, I love all the comments. Um, you guys telling me about my videos, what you guys like, what you don't like. If anybody wants to ask me any questions about their truck, please, please reach out to me over email. Um, I responded to a handful of guys and unfortunately I don't get um, notifications for replies to my reply. Um, so I was looking through some comments and saw it was like a few months ago I didn't answer this guy back. I'm like, oh man. So you got a better shot and getting a hold of me if you uh, just email me. All right, so here we are underneath the truck. I got both my drain pans here. I've already got my uh, brake clean and uh, my components down here that I'm gonna need. All right, what I like to do first is if I'm laying down underneath here. Let me go ahead and bust this loose first. I'm just gonna get it loose. Okay, second, I'm gonna go for this filter. This filter is what I like to do first. Just work that strap all the way up here. At the very top, there's a metal, metal, big metal ring that is at the very top of the filter. If you do it down here, you can crush it if it's really tight. So go up here to the top where you have a lot more um, material behind this thin skin and you'll be able to get your your oil filter off. Okay, so that wasn't too bad. Let's get this thing off. Now there's two things. If this truck was hot, this is going to start dripping oil right away and it's going to be just a real mess. Since this is cold, what I'm most likely going to be able to do is spin this all the way off before oil starts dripping and making a mess and I'll just immediately go right into the pan. So let's see if we can achieve that. Okay, I didn't get any oil on me. I'm going right into the pan. Okay, that wasn't that bad. No big deal. No bullshit. I don't, I don't have any oil on my hands. Um, I'm going to move the drain pan as far over as I can without letting it drip on the ground. I want to get it out of my way. Okay, see how far over I got that. Now that's going to allow me to come in here with my oil drain pan that I'm going to use to catch all the oil in the crankcase. So remember, we already loosened that bolt. Okay, make sure you get it get it angled in the right way because that boy's going to jet back on you. So I'm, I'm going to say probably right about there. If not, it's going to get all over you guys. 
we got a couple drips going on the floor right now. Okay, here we go. Remember, if it's hot, she's gonna be jushing out at you. Okay, not not too messy, not too messy. Okay, so once you get the the flow started, and you can see that it's not all the way in the back of the pan, go ahead and push your pan up forward so that it's underneath your oil pan. So that once it starts dripping down here, it's gonna go right into the pan because sometimes it likes to curve down around the pan and then drip down. So you just don't want to be making a mess on your your fresh concrete or your uh, your barn, shop, your customer's driveway, what have you. All right, so right now we have one of two things. We either can stay relaxing underneath here, perhaps fall asleep for a quick few minutes, or we can do more things while we're waiting. Uh, one of those things being uh, the oil filter. Get your oil filter and fill it up uh, with about a half a quart of oil I can safely fill in there. Um, probably could squeeze more, but I think half quart is sufficient. Um, uh, once you get that ready for installation, you're really going to want to pay attention to right there. Okay, if it's hot, this is going to be leaking real loosely and all over real fast. So. What you can do is just spin the filter on, and I have been shooting brake clean between the crack of the oil filter housing adapter and the oil filter, and blowing the oil that sits right in that little groove right on top of the oil filter. People don't do it, they start driving, and the uh, filter gets all stained because the oil flows out of the top of that ring, so who wants, who wants that? The whole side of the oil pan's all nasty. Um, let's not do that, guys. So. When we come back, I'm going to have a primed oil filter, and we're going to uh, hopefully have little to no oil dripping out of that, and uh, we'll give it a, a quick wipe and then spin the filter on as fast as we can. All right, right now I'm happy with, uh, with the drains, how oh, they're just uh, leaking right here. They're going to be leaking all day if I just let them go like that. So this is all almost all the way full. Not all the way full, but we definitely have 13 quarts in there. So. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and throw this plug back in so I can get this drain pan out of my way. Screw that guy on. Try not to make a mess because I don't like cleaning up these nice pretty white floors. Okay. I can go ahead and just move this out so I can get a little torque. We'll have to pound it with a hammer. It's ready to go. It was made to go. Then, just so we don't forget, just hit that with a little, little brake clean. I don't like to see any oil stain or residue. Okay, I'm happy with that. So now, this is gonna be a little tricky. Okay, so right now, we currently have a little drip from the oil filter housing. We're gonna have to work around that, and it can be difficult, it can be messy. So it looks like we got it leaking from the back of the housing. So if I can go and I'm gonna wipe the rest of this housing gasket mating surface, get it with no oil, go as far as I can. Maybe I'll just wipe it real quick, give it a quick swipe. Do it one more time. It's just a never-ending, never-ending battle. No matter how hard you try, just get it as good as you can. I like the way that looks. We got just a little bit of oil in one side that's gonna, that's gonna get on the filter. Okay, I got my primed filter right here with our super premium 10W30. And I'm gonna come behind the leak and I'm gonna go real quick. I don't want that groove to fill up with a lot of oil. And that means more cleaning. I'm not gonna reef it down. I'm just gonna give it a 
couple snugs, and then get that out of the way. Don't need our wrench, get that out of the way. My one last part is gonna be to clean, and we're just gonna break, break clean it down, and then I'm gonna show you, I use the air gun, obviously, to get in between that, but if you can't, just give it a good, a good soak and come right in here with the blow gun and go like this. You see some of that oil wick down. And I just kind of repeat the process a few times until I get no more no more oil coming out. All right, that's about as good as we're gonna get. Just maybe come back up here. Just give it a quick wipe for aesthetics. All right, you guys, so that is it from underneath. We have completed the oil filter change and oil change. Uh, yeah, so let's move to the top, aye? All right, we're up top, and like I said, I put half a quart in our filter. And right now I got uh, about 900 gallons of this, of which 13 quarts I am only gonna choose. So what I've done is I put a little zip tie here, and basically I slip this here like that. And because we're pumping molasses, you can hear the pumper in the background, it's gonna be a minute. So I like to take this time to go around and give my, my checks, gotta give a little bit of coolant, Maybe spray these battery terminals down. Uh, air filter visually is good. We got coolant in the secondary. Fill up your washer solvent. Got a little bit of corrosion going on here. No biggie. Um, maybe take this time to set your air pressures according to your door sticker placard. Um, when I do my oil changes, I like to try to be as efficient as I can. I don't like to be standing around. So right now we got uh, that much more to go. Uh, I guess I could add my coolant and maybe fill up my washer solvent. Nice and full. Remember, don't forget to cover it. We're almost there. Coolant's full, right to them. To the to the fill mark and here comes our oil cut off let's see if I can get it right on the dizot nope got it on point two all right everyone that is it do not forget to put your oil fill cap back on and that has completed our maintenance, well, oil change for this 1267 Super Duty. So right now, the last, very last step is the oil change sticker. And you can see the mileage on here. I only do 5,000 intervals. If you guys want a few of these, let me know. We got 75 thou, so I'm gonna make it for 80,000, but I guess you need to find out or look at the truck. Does it look like it does a lot of idling? Then you might wanna do the engine hour meter by going here on your setup, hit setup for system check, and then hit the reset when you're done, and it's gonna go through and tell you the engine hours. So multiply that by 30, and that's gonna give you the approximation of how many miles to hours it has. And you can see, okay, yep, they're doing more driving than they are idling. So make the oil chain sticker for 5,000. This is what I've found the best. Um, the oil chain stickers coming back with this Sharpie on it. 
up to 500 degrees stays on here the sun doesn't eat uh, uh, bleach this out so this is the sharpie that I see uh, that works the best uh, when writing these oil chain stickers so again our mileage we're at 75231 so how about if we go how about if we go 80,250 that sounds like a good round number to me don't be a bunghole and just plaster it over the window at least make it respectable looking all right you guys tell me what you think about that in the comment section below if anybody has ever had an issue changing the oil on their 67 or has never known how and now you do Drop me a like, smash that like button, and uh, I'll catch you next Friday. Thanks for watching, everyone.